Chicken pot pie. It's a fantastic mix of a delicious, savory, and creamy chicken stew with a delicious, fluffy, and light pastry on top. Today, we're gonna show you how to make it. What's going on guys? It's Matt, welcome back to the channel. It's Sunday, you know what that means, it's Sunday Supper, where every single Sunday I give you one of my 50 life-changing recipes for home cooks. Today, we are doing one of my favorites, we're doing a chicken pot pie. Is there anything he's uh, passionate about? I love chicken pot pie. Now, there are a few different steps that go into this recipe, and a few of them take a little bit of time. The actual work that you're gonna have to do is actually quite small, and there's a couple of time-saving techniques that you can use along the way to make this really a great, home cooked dinner. It's also freeze incredibly well, so throw them in the freezer and then you can reheat them and have a great weeknight dinner. So let's break down what we need for this recipe. We need a chicken stew. It needs to be creamy. It needs to be really flavorful with really delicious chicken. Step number two is we need a really delicious pastry on the top. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but let's get started first on the chicken stew. There's a lot of different choices that you can make when you decide what kind of chicken you want to put in here. I'm going to use chicken thighs. You could use chicken breast in here. I think the dark meat, you know, it's tastier. It's going to make a more delicious stew. This is really down to your preference, so do what you want. But what I also have in here, and it's going to be a little tough to see, is the bone is still in this. We're going to poach the chicken in some chicken stock and some vegetables, and the bone and those vegetables are going to help fortify that chicken stock. A lot of YouTubers, a lot of cooks out there, will say don't buy pre-made chicken stock from the store and you know I sort of agree with that but we don't always have homemade chicken stock kicking around so if you're gonna buy chicken stock from this store this is a great way to infuse it with even more flavor even if you're using homemade stock like I am this infusion of flavor is going to take things to the next level so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my chicken and my root vegetables I've got some carrots onion a bit of garlic a bit of thyme we're gonna put all of that in the chicken stock we're gonna let this simmer until the chicken is completely cooked after about 20 minutes or so, this is nicely poached. We can set this aside to cool off and start working on the filling. I'm going to drain all of the solids from the stock so that we just have the fortified liquid left. We're going to use that in our filling and set the chicken aside to cool off. The rest of the solids we can just throw out. They've done their job. So phase one of our chicken pot pie is done. We have some poached chicken that is cooling off somewhere back there. Now we can start on our filling. So first things first is I need to prepare some vegetables. This is where you can get a little bit creative and do whatever you like on this. I'm gonna do what I think is sort of the traditional vegetables, the mirepoix vegetables. We've got carrots, onions, and celery. I'm gonna cut those down, trying to keep them all about the same size, cut them down into a nice fine dice. And then we're gonna make a root. Gonna add some butter and some flour and let that cook for three or four minutes till that sort of floury smell is gone. Then we're gonna add our vegetables right into the pot. I'm gonna cook this for about five to seven minutes until everything's about translucent. Then I'm gonna add some white wine to deglaze the bottom of the pot and start making our sauce. Once everything's smooth, I'm gonna add in that chicken stock that I poached the chicken in. Bring this up to about medium high heat or so. It's gonna be thin, but it's gonna start to thicken up as you bring it to the boil. The roux that we made needs some heat and it's gonna start to thicken up really quite nicely. I'm gonna add in some frozen peas. These take a lot less time to cook, so I'm gonna add these towards the end. Season with a bit of salt, pepper, and Worcester sauce. Worcester, Worcester. Chestershire, however you call it. And we're most of the way there on our sauce. And let's just give it a taste to check the seasoning. Yeah, that's pretty good. You can add more salt, more pepper, really any seasoning that you want at this point. I'm fairly happy with how I did so far. Where did my chicken go? So the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shred this chicken. Basically just take the bone out of here, cut it down into whatever size pieces that I want, add it to my filling, and then I'm gonna throw this in the fridge until it's completely cooled down. Two steps down, only one more to go. We just have to talk about the lid or the dough that's gonna go on top. This is store-bought puff pastry. Now I know you might be thinking, Matt, this is crazy. This is a cooking YouTube channel. You should be making everything from scratch. You don't always need to do that. And puff pastry is notoriously hard to make. The store-bought stuff is pretty good. It's gonna get us a really thick puffed up dough, which I like, which I think goes really, really well with this. You could use pie dough. Basically, the process that we're gonna go through is gonna be exactly the same. If you use puff pastry, if you use pie dough, what you need to do is cut down the puff pastry into squares. We're gonna add my filling right into my dish and then put the pie dough or the puff pastry right on top. Crimp it down lightly. You might have to do this a bit more with the pie dough versus the puff pastry. And then we're gonna make an egg wash by combining an egg and a little bit of cream. I like putting a little bit of flaky salt right on top of this to give it a little bit of crunch and a little bit more of a salty taste. And then we're going into the oven, 400 Fahrenheit, 200 Celsius, until it's golden brown and delicious. 
So after about 35 minutes or so in the oven, I've got something that looks like this. It's really nice and golden brown on top. This is the hardest part of this recipe. This has to sit for probably about 20 or 30 minutes. It's really hot right now. The filling's just gonna go everywhere. If you let it set, let it cool down just a little bit, and then we'll jump into it. The long wait is over, so this should be good to go. Let's see how it tastes. It's still really hot. That's awesome. The top is really buttery, inside is really creamy. Hope you get a chance to make this yourself. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Look at that nice piece there.